Far Cry 6. I've been playing this game for a few days now. I got a review copy from Ubisoft and I've played about 22 hours of it. Now, as a disclaimer, I have not beaten the game. I haven't rolled credits on it. I'm about, I'd say, two-thirds of the way. Uh, there are three major regions on the map and three factions there that you have to kind of convince to join your cause. I've completed two out of the three and I'm halfway through the third. I'd say it's safe to assume that we're looking at a roughly 30 hours-ish experience with a healthy combination of main missions and a few side activities here and there. And I suspect completionists can probably add 10 to 15 hours of additional gameplay on top of that, as has been the case with previous Far Cry games. Now, while I didn't beat the game, I've certainly played enough of it where I can give you a good rundown of what this game is, what you can look forward to. So I hope this video will prove to be useful for those who are on the fence about this game or just looking for information. And I should also note there is co-op in this game and co-op missions and the like, but I purely played it single player, which is how I tend to like to play um, games like this that are you know more story driven and the like. Now, the first thing to get out of the way, this is a Far Cry game in every sense. They don't mix up the formula all that much. Structurally, this is quintessential Far Cry, for better or for worse. If you want another dumb, fun, open-world, first-person shooter experience with Ubisoft-style progression and design, well, that's exactly what you'll get here. But if you were hoping for substantial improvements or an evolution of Far Cry, you'll have to look elsewhere. There are two sides to this coin for me. On one hand, you've got the thing that makes Far Cry fun, the freedom to approach missions in whatever creative ways you can come up with, afforded to you by the open world and the tools you're given, be it gear, weapons, vehicles, and companions. I'd be lying if I said that there weren't times where I felt great satisfaction from some of the stunts that I pulled, like taking a plane into an enemy base, gliding my way through the skies after jumping out before parachuting down at just the right spot and deploying my recon tools and stealth weapons to take out an entire base unnoticed. The best thing about Far Cry 6 is the freedom it offers to just mess around. And when things go according to plan and lead to some organically occurring epic stealth or shootout sequence, it can be quite a rush. I did play most of the game stealthily, and there were definitely times when I got MGS5 vibes, though Far Cry 6's stealth systems and mechanics certainly aren't anywhere as intricate. Like, for example, you can't even shoot out lights in this game from what I've been able to tell, but it's still, you know, serviceable stealth gameplay. Now, on the flip side, what brought the experience down for me was the familiarity of its design compared to past games. And I'm not just talking about Far Cry games, I'm talking about Ubisoft games as a whole. There were times when Far Cry 6 felt like a heavily modded version of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a contemporary first-person shooter of it. It's just so structurally similar. You'll spend most of your time clearing out enemy forts, bases, and encampments that are aesthetically different in Far Cry compared to obviously like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is a different setting and all that, but the layout is kind of similar, and also Watch Dogs Legion had similar types of enemy bases that also felt similar in that regard. And before you know it, the game's fairly sizable map will be dotted with a wide array of enemy sites to capture, be it by killing all enemies or fulfilling certain conditions, and then documents or NPCs will reveal the locations of new targets to go after, and successful captures will weaken the enemy faction in some way. It's that cycle that players of Ubisoft games will be all too familiar with. The game does mix things up a bit with the occasional navigational puzzle. There are side activities like having to intercept an enemy supply drop, and it's this timed run that's akin to what you saw in Immortals Phoenix Rising or Watch Dogs Legion and some of those side activities. There are mini games like the admittedly endearing and hilarious fighting game-inspired cockfights as well as relay races and domino matches and the like. Though, those are fairly minor distractions compared to the main thing you're doing in this game, which is just clearing out enemy bases. Main missions do make things a bit more interesting with narrative developments, and they do offer set pieces and a few cool missions, but overall, mission types are mostly a repetitive affair, feeling similar to other Ubisoft games I played recently, like Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs. And some missions are flat-out uninspired and insufferable, 
particularly those involving having to go to various different locations just to like activate something, press a button on something. And there were certain missions where the objectives and map markers were unclear, which led to wasted time and a desire to stop playing. Like there was this one mission where I had to dump some bombs in a trash cans in the surrounding area, but there were very specific trash cans you had to dump those in. There were other trash cans around, but those didn't count. Was, I w was walking around for a while before I figured out exactly what this game wanted from me, and uh, that stuff certainly turned me off. But even among the better missions, it didn't take long in my playthrough of Far Cry 6 to get a sense of deja vu. The feeling that I've basically played this game before, just it's different mechanics in Far Cry. Weapons and gear are also handled similarly to recent Ubisoft titles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla as well. You find them in chests scattered across the open world. You'll progressively unlock better versions of weapon archetypes that deal more damage, handle better, have a higher rate of fire, better ammo capacity, etc. Just better weapons as you go along, and you'll be able to buy mods through materials that have been looted, collected, and scavenged out and about, with vendors selling better gear and better upgrades as you level up, and better mods also unlocking as you rank up. As far as armor goes, much like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Immortals Phoenix Rising even, different armor pieces offer distinct benefits that will have you mix and match what suits your playstyle. Plenty of games do something similar, but that Ubisoft DNA can definitely be felt all throughout the game's gear and weapons progression system. Now admittedly, I gotta hand it to Far Cry 6 for some of the more ridiculous weapons, like the multi-barrel target tracking mortar backpack, there's this fireworks rocket launcher, there's a deadly and stealthy nail gun, there's this CD shooting gun, among many others. The backpacks in particular, called Supremos, offer a wide variety of essentially ultimate abilities that can only be used after a cooldown that can be sped up by killing enemies and the like. Beyond the multi-barrel mortar backpack, you've got other backpacks like this EMP deploying one. There's another one that revives and heals. There's one that I haven't unlocked that allows you to see through and shoot through walls. It's more for stealth based players and more of like a ladder game item that you unlock. And some of these weapons have this makeshift vibe to them and that just gives the game's arsenal more personality. I also get a kick out of the animal companions you get to optionally bring with you, from a giant crocodile named Guapo, which means handsome in Spanish, to a heart-meltingly adorable puppy named Chorizo, which means sausage, among various others. That's pretty charming. And they do function differently. A more passive companion like Chorizo can distract enemies with his cuteness, and other more lethal animal companions, like the crocodile, can be ordered to attack and kill enemies. I didn't use them all that much personally, as my playstyle is centered around solo stealth, but they certainly could come in handy every once in a while. It also helps that weapons across the board generally feel good to use, and there's a decent arsenal to play around with in this game, but it's overall just the same familiar structure of finding weapons and gear and chests and stashes by checking off markers on your map that appear when infiltrating a compound or when marked by notes, documents, and NPCs you interact with and inform you about new locations for new things to find, or by using clues offered by the game's menus which tell you where to find certain weapons and the like. And as far as the progression of your equipment goes, a detriment that I noticed, and I don't know if it's just me, was that progression of weapons and gear in this game just felt slow and front-loaded at least for the stealthy setup that I went for, once I found my ideal stealth setup, there came a point where I was essentially just using that setup for every mission I went on, and the fun of the game started to peer out because the approach to missions began to thin out. It's already not ideal that mission variety and design felt lacking, and they feel like I've already played these types of missions before in other Ubisoft games, but that could have been mitigated somewhat with better paced and more substantial acquisitions and unlocks of new weapons, gear, and upgrades. That would encourage me to experiment with different ways to approach infiltrations, even for missions that are structured similarly, and that would have helped. And that's kind of a, like MGS5, Metal Gear Solid 5 Excel that, the constant introduction of new things to make you rethink your infiltration approach or to experiment. In Far Cry 6, you know, there's that to an extent, but there came a point where I started tackling missions exactly the same way each time, with how infrequently I got new toys to play with, with how slowly it felt like I leveled up to unlock new stuff to purchase or craft, with how front-loaded this aspect felt, which meant that gameplay excitement 
petered out earlier than I would have liked and tedium started to set in. Also borrowed from Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the camp upgrade system that allows you to spend crafting materials and resources on new structures that offer benefits, be it hideout locations, new vendors, benefits to certain activities like hunting and fishing, unlocking modes like the MGS5 style passive dispatch missions. I don't really feel like I have to describe the gameplay of Far Cry 6 in depth because we've been here and done that. I'd be essentially describing other Ubisoft games that many of you are probably already familiar with. Even the main campaign straight up just felt like Assassin's Creed or Watch Dogs. There's a big bad leader you have to take down and you have to work your way up the pyramid of their chain of command and dismantle key underlings and lieutenants before you can get to the big boss. And in Far Cry 6, the big boss is Anton Castillo, played by the ever-compelling Giancarlo Esposito. The story revolves around a fictional guerrilla faction called Libertad, which the protagonist Danny hesitantly joins to liberate the fictional country of Yara from Anton's iron grip rule and cruel dictatorship. The story so far two-thirds of the way through has been fine, and it does have some memorable moments and scenes and beats here and there. It can be entertaining, but it's overall very surface-level storytelling, I feel, as far as topics like guerrillas and dictatorships go. It's not thought-provoking or emotionally evocative on the level of some of the best video game narratives out there. It's more of a turn-your-brain-off-and-enjoy-the-roller-coaster ride kind of experience with a few emotional and memorable beats here and there. It's certainly no, like, Narcos, the Netflix show, though Far Cry 6 is a game that doesn't really take itself too seriously, which will not come as a surprise for Far Cry veterans. That's always been Far Cry's identity in a lot of ways. Like in past Far Cry games, the villains are as unhinged as they come, and your allies are eccentric, to say the least, cartoonishly so at times even. For the most part, performances for key characters are really solid, and I had fun with these outlandish personalities. The characters give off this kind of uh, a James Gunn Suicide Squad or Grand Theft Auto vibe, if that makes sense. Now, while Giancarlo's performance as Anton is really good, I'd hardly call it his most memorable villain, outclassed by Breaking Bad's Gus Fring or The Mandalorian's Moff Gideon. I think it has less to do with his performance and more to do with the writing. I, it just doesn't offer anywhere close to the amount of nuance as his other works, and past Far Cry villains like Vas still stand out more, I feel. Anton comparatively just feels a bit more generic and mustache twirly, though maybe finishing the full game will change my mind. That's one thing I don't know how this game ends, and that's something to consider for this impressions video slash review, whatever you want to call it. But two-thirds into the game, most of what I've seen so far and heard from Anton is propaganda and villain speeches. Well delivered, mind you, but just a bit generic in their substance as far as the writing goes. More compelling moments are interactions with his son, Diego, and if anything, I found Diego to be more compelling, as this is a child who's burdened with a secession of Anton's blood-soaked throne. I won't go too much into detail to avoid spoilers, but I was intrigued by the messed-up father-son dynamic, and I wish there was more of that throughout the main campaign. Like, we do see them, it's just really sporadically spread out. As for the rest of the cast, there are some standout ally characters with actors fully leaning into their eccentricity, which can make characters pretty fun to behold, but they can at times feel overly caricaturish, which comes at the expense of being able to take them and the overall story too seriously, just diminishes my emotional investment as it all feels like this satire almost. This is somewhat balanced out by the protagonist Danny's incredulity. She's the more normal person reacting to the absurdity surrounding her. And generally, I do like Danny as a protagonist, at least the female version that I chose. Uh, you can pick male or female. Just the right balance of tough but sympathetic, backed up by a really good performance, I think. Part of what hurts the ability for characters in this game to stand out further, I think, is the aging game engine that Ubisoft keeps using. To my eyes, Far Cry 6 looks undeniably dated compared to other more astounding open-world AAA action-adventure games that have been released in recent years. Facial animations and lip-syncing in particular can feel off, which can hurt the potency of actors' performances. Yara did not elect me to do what's easy, but to do what's right. Anton Castillo's presence in particular, I think, was diminished by the unremarkable animations that robbed Giancarlo's performance of its full nuance and potential. 
and same goes for other characters. It's also jarring how certain missions are preceded by full-fledged cutscenes, while others are preceded by a separate stilted dialogue screen that seems to show budget or time constraints in animating all of these characters seamlessly within the open world itself. The game's presentation is overall serviceable. It's not like this awful looking game or anything, it's just far from remarkable by today's standards. And I'd say the same about the overall visual fidelity of this game, it's open world, you name it. I do think that Yara itself from an artistic standpoint does evoke a good amount of personality and certainly captures a decent fictional reflection of Cuba. But I've seen models and textures and vistas that look so much better in other open world games. And the crowd density, or lack thereof, made for a world that does feel quite a bit empty and not as immersive as it could have been. Not to say that there aren't some cool sceneries to behold here and there, or that there aren't certain cool set pieces. It's just not all that impressive compared to the competition. But at the very least, the game's performance did hold up pretty well for my PC at least, though. I am using one of the highest-end GPUs, an RTX 3080. At 1440p ultra settings, the lowest I saw frame rates wise was 5960 FPS, and that was pretty brief when that did happen. For the most part, the game ran for me at anywhere between 70 to 90 frames per second, making for a smooth experience all throughout at pretty much max settings. I cannot speak for other setups and lower end rigs though, but in my experience performance was never an issue I encountered. But no amount of frames per second can aid a general lack of attention to detail in the game's presentation. Some folks may not care about this stuff, but to me it's the little things that can make a big difference. So just to list a few examples, in the intro sequence alone, a man who got executed lacked any signs of injury or blood. Right after that, a woman whose home I barged into would just stand there and not react to anything I did, wouldn't even look at me as I moved around this stage. Then there were times when attacking friendly NPCs yielded no reactions. Phone calls don't tend to be reflected in character animations, be it Danny the protagonist, or NPCs calling you who, if you go to them while they're calling you, they'll just be engaged in their stock idle animations while simultaneously calling you, and they're not animated at all to reflect the phone calls, so that just completely took me out. And there were times when how certain missions played out didn't make sense, and I cannot show you footage of these as these are later in the game, but in one mission I got a call from an ally about how they were being surrounded by an armada of soldiers, but I had stealthily killed most of them beforehand, so there were only like two soldiers left outside. It didn't reflect the conversation itself. In another, I was disguised as this journalist being given a tour in enemy territory, and I got to walk around and do all sorts of weird things without raising suspicion or enemies reacting. Like, I was able to walk up to where the speech was being given and just kind of walk around, and the lack of restrictions given the circumstances of me being in the belly of the beast it just kind of broke the tension of that mission. In another, after being imprisoned and tortured, I had all my gear the second the torture cutscene ended and the escape sequence started, making for a really jarring transition. These aren't game-breaking issues, but they do break immersion, which is a key component of a video game. These are things that made me go, wait, what? and just kind of broke that illusion, you know? I also did encounter a few technical and design issues that disrupted my personal experience. One of my biggest gripes with this game is a lack of manual save and load system. The game forces you to rely on its autosave system instead. I like to set up my own checkpoints as a stealthy player, you know, and I just wasn't given that option. Doesn't help that this game's autosave can be inconsistent, sometimes saving near a target destination, other times not, and when it doesn't, I get taken all the way back to a friendly camp way in the distance when reloading or after dying, forcing me to essentially journey back to a target destination again, and I wasted a decent amount of time doing that. And it's doubly frustrating when a technical issue is what gets me killed when I'm doing really well in a mission. Like, there was this one time I died after landing from a high place from fall damage even though my parachute had been deployed. And this was after I had taken down enemies silently without getting noticed once, and I put all this time and effort into this mission, and I was really satisfied with the progress, and all that got lost. It doesn't help that reloading an autosave sometimes doesn't recuperate used grenades and ammo, while enemies respawn in their entirety when reloading an autosave, so you lose resources when autosaving, and it's just 
really weird and, again, inconsistent. A lack of manual save and load can also be frustrating when purchasing weapons, gear, and upgrades because I found it a bit too easy to make accidental purchases due to a lack of prompts or the ability to undo a purchase before exiting a menu, and there's no way to just reload a previous save to rectify such a mistake. And as far as bugs and glitches go, aside from the, again, occasional death by deployed parachute, I encountered bugs like NPCs getting stuck behind objects, corpses floating midair, or uh, whatever the hell this was. Admittedly, this was pretty hilarious. Now, these issues didn't occur frequently, they happen once in a while, so it wasn't all that egregious. Now, there were some open-world quirks that disrupted certain missions, like there was this one mission where I was being escorted inside a truck as part of the objectives, but an enemy truck in the open world happened to be there and just started shooting, which wasn't supposed to happen in this mission, and because this wasn't supposed to happen, characters during this sequence just aren't reacting to getting shot and blown to hell. Now, after I died and restarted this sequence, it got fixed, but it's still stuff like this, hilarious, but immersion breaking nonetheless. In another mission that I cannot show, I threw a Molotov in a room an NPC was in and the fire just wouldn't go out despite there not being anything particularly flammable. And I kept burning myself while trying to revive the NPC who kept getting downed. And I just kept having to revive this NPC until the fires died down after I like left the room and came back and I had to just like work around this weird bizarre issue. And then I could talk to the NPC and proceed with the objective. So, stuff like that. But with all said and done, I didn't encounter any game-breaking bugs. I just encountered a few frustrating design flaws, some technical issues that did disrupt one or two missions, and a few immersion-breaking bugs. So, with all that said, do I recommend this game? Look, if you're burned out by the Ubisoft formula of games, then Far Cry 6 is definitely not for you. It is as Ubisoft game a game can get with all the pros and cons that comes with that. But if you're into this type of experience, if you've played all these Ubisoft games and enjoy them consistently with each new release, despite the flaws, if you want more of that Far Cry you already know, if you want to have some dumb fun in an open world environment and are into the eccentricity and outlandishness of the Far Cry series, if it's been a while since you've played Far Cry or have never played Far Cry before and this will be your first entry, if you meet some or all of these conditions, then you may very well have a good amount of fun with this title. I know I raise a lot of qualms and issues that I had with this game, but there is certainly some fun to be had amidst the chaos of this game and with the sandbox freedom, but it's just for my part, I'm more in the former crowd where this game just feels overly familiar. It's repetitive within the confines of Far Cry 6, but when you consider all of these other Ubisoft games that utilize basically the same structure, the tedium and the repetitiveness just gets amplified that much more because... I haven't just played these missions over and over again within Far Cry 6, I've played them over and over again within past Ubisoft titles that I've checked out. So that's kind of my main issue with it. It's what led to me feeling burned out by this game earlier than I would have liked. And this is a game that I probably would have to force myself to finish. I was having a decent amount of fun the first hours, you know, the first half maybe even, but there came a point where I was like, I've done enough of these missions for a lifetime and... Far Cry 6 doesn't excel in other ways that compensate for that familiar, samey, repetitive mission structure that plagues Ubisoft games. And so this is not a game that I'd say is for me. It's not something that I hated. It's just something that I didn't feel like seeing all the way through. And it's one of those games that during the review process, I had to take breaks frequently because the tedium kept creeping in after a, a couple hours of playing this game. Whereas games that I really do enjoy and I really feel immersed in and just feel drawn to, you know, time flies by with those games. And I just... I don't even have to force myself to finish them because I so badly want to keep playing, you know? And Far Cry 6 just isn't within that echelon of games. Despite the sporadic moments of fun that I did have with this game, with the freedom of the open world and the tools that I was offered and the solutions that I came up with to tackle certain missions. So this is obviously just my take on the game and hopefully this overview at least informs you enough for you to be able to make a determination as to whether this is a game for you because just because it's not full on for me doesn't mean that you're not going to have fun with it. So 
hopefully uh, the information here is useful to you. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my reviews and my content, consider supporting my channel by joining, becoming a member, or by going to Patreon and contributing there. You can also buy merch like the hat there. I got shirts that are <laughs> in the washing machine currently. You've got uh, loot box shaped stress boxes that just, uh, yeah, just squeeze and let your stresses leave and fly away but mainly i'm just glad you're here enjoying the content interacting with it sharing it liking it uh, viewing it you know and just uh being an all-around great crowd appreciate that so that's that that's one man's take on this game and for more gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out <laughs>